Hello and welcome to another weekly podcast where we discuss supplier <clears throat> uh, news focused on supplier diversity in small business and how that news can impact uh, the economy as well as any individual, you know, smaller firms, smaller diverse firms, uh, particularly in America. Uh, but I, I do speak about, you know, global um, issues as well, which I will be doing so today. But um, for this week, uh, what I want to focus on are a few things. First piece, obviously, as you can see, is the Amazon launching storefronts uh, to help promote <clears throat> small businesses. Uh, then there's a couple of other things, including tariffs. I think you can pretty much see it up here. Tariffs. Uh, solar energy is looking to become more diverse in terms of recruiting their uh, potential employees. And then what's going on with the UK and the EU with as it pertains to Brexit as new information was given earlier today. Uh, today being Friday, uh, yeah, September 21st. But let's start with Amazon. So Amazon launches uh, storefronts, which again, is to promote small businesses. Uh, they said it's going to be on their homepage. So you can essentially what will happen is you can, if you're looking to purchase from small businesses, you can go to their website, click on the link, and then it'll take you to products that are being sold exclusively by small and medium-sized uh, businesses. Um, not much, not much here uh, in terms of news, but just wanted to make sure that everyone is aware of this. Uh, Walmart actually did something similar a couple of months ago, so. One of the things uh, that people are saying with this, um, so it's gotten some positive and negative feedback. Uh, some people are saying that this is too late for Amazon. Um, the fact that, as we are all aware, uh, one of the big things that Amazon does is they sell products for cheap, meaning that the profit margins for smaller firms a lot of times can become non-existent. Um, and because of that, you kind of have to be one of the larger businesses in order to really be successful on Amazon's platform. Sorry about that. So, oops, sorry about that again. <clears throat> so, uh, moving forward. But, uh, yep, so so um, regardless, I do think that this is a step in the right direction. Um, however, you want to talk about the timing that, that it has happened, I think this is really good. Uh, they are, all, Amazon is also going to be push, putting forth a um, uh, ad advertising campaign. So they're going to have TV ads and whatnot and online ads highlighting different companies uh, that are going to be put on the on the Amazon storefronts platform so that you can see and purchase from them. So I think that that's going to be a really good, uh, <clears throat> really good opportunity for those small businesses that are included with that. But yeah, if you're a small business and you're looking to again connect with Amazon, as well as being mentioned or, or also included on the storefronts, definitely take a look at the platform and and see how you can be added to that as well but again i think this is a good step in the right direction regardless of if you regardless of how you see that the time frame of it of it happening now it's kind of funny that i'm saying you know that this is great and whatnot for small businesses as the next piece of news i'm going to talk about is tariffs right <laughs> this could be a <laughs> this could be catastrophic uh, small businesses say new tariffs will make it even harder to compete. Now, this is by the Washington Post. So, you know, if you're a conservative, I'm pretty sure you're like, this is fake news. And if you're a liberal, you're saying that this is exactly <laughs> the news that um, is, is needed and correct. Look, <clears throat> the reason why I want to highlight this piece is because, again, and I've mentioned this before, one of the things that we we saw or we're, we're, we're now in the we're now in the in the time frame where it, there's slowly becoming that split where um, up until you know the second quarter of this year second third quarter of 2018 so this year basically all economists said that our, our economy was going to grow and, and do well no, no nobody objected to that the only objection was how well are we going to do uh president trump or the trump administration um, kind of exceeded people's expectations when he hit that i think it was 4.2 or 4.1 percent growth maybe 4.3 uh in over four percent growth uh, when it came to GDP, um, now that people are kind of analyzing it and doing closer looks at that, uh, while it is great, uh, one of the things that people are concerned about is, is smaller businesses and, and how much were they able to to take advantage of that growth. Um, and, you know, there are some you know, reports here and there suggesting exactly how that happened. But uh, 
one of the things that we do know is, is again moving forward in this you know third fourth quarter time frame this is where people are splitting and you know conservative economists are saying this is going to we're going to continue to be great we're going to even expand further uh <laughs> such as the, the federal bank, uh, reserve bank of atlanta is like really big on 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 its estimates and saying that we're going to continue to do well whereas other um experts particularly liberal and um independents are saying that we don't know uh, well, independents are more so saying we don't know, we'll see. And then liberals are, are saying this is going to be detrimental when it comes to tariffs <clears throat> and how we're growing currently. So everybody agrees that short term, this is great. Uh, long term, we're, we're unsure and we're kind of hitting the long term now. So uh, one of the things that so, so there's a couple there's a couple of bits of news here that that um, you need to be aware of. Um, if you're not aware, a Trump administration latest round of tariffs on 200 billion dollars worth of Chinese goods goes into effect. Uh, so they just hit that. Um, one of the things you should also be aware of is that in China, uh, they are creeping towards a recession right now, uh, thanks to the tariffs. So when Donald Trump said that he was going to use the tariffs to hit China hard and bring them to the trading table, so far it's 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 going the way that he's planned. So j just an FYI. Uh, but what we're now seeing is we're starting to see more and more small businesses kind of start saying, "Hey, this is this is starting to affect me." Um, small businesses in America specifically. So, for example, <clears throat> a furniture retailer store gets obviously uh, some of their products from China uh, is now having to raise their prices because their manufacturer is raising theirs as well, thanks to the uh, tariffs, right? So five to ten percent more on everyday goods. That's an example. Um, now, one of the, the the issues now that we're creeping up into is that, and you know, we talked about Amazon and them being so, you know, in order to make a profit margin, you have to charge as low as possible. With the increase in these prices. Uh, for manufacturing companies specifically, specifically, uh, people who are you know buying those and you know doing whatever and then selling them, um, now they're now they're starting to get worried, right? Because in, in order to be successful on Amazon and Way and Wayfair, you got to keep your prices low, but now we're we're seeing that that's becoming harder and harder to do. Uh, so now it's starting to affect people's bottom line, and and now people are saying, okay, this may not be where where I kind of want to go. Uh, and you can just see it here, you know, to be told suddenly that you'd be hit with a 10% surcharge uh, for orders that you plan for the next six months is really big. Now, what I do want to say is for those who are saying, hey, you know, this is going to hit the bigger companies like Walmart and Amazon, uh, it won't, right? So it says it here, and while larger retailers such as Walmart, JCPenney, and Amazon say they have already locked in low price inventory for the holidays. So what that essentially means is that the prices are going to essentially stay the same throughout the entire for the rest of the year so we're, we're pretty much good in terms of that if you're you know, looking you know looking towards your christmas shopping you should be fine um <clears throat> however even still we're not here to talk about those larger companies we're, we're talking about small businesses and small businesses a lot of them don't have those prices locked in so because of that this increase is in particular when we're talking about retail companies um who are buying a lot of their products overseas we're starting to see some companies uh, come a little, a, a little worried. Now, when asking the Trump administration, uh, go down a little bit here. The Trump administration, however, continues to maintain that escalating trade war with China will not affect American consumers. And um, this is from Wilbur Ross, uh, U.S. Commerce Secretary. You have a 10 percent tariff on another 200 billion. That's 20 billion a year. That's a tiny, tiny fraction of 1% total inflation in the U.S. So he's taking the inflation route. Um, not necessarily talking about, <clears throat> um, not necessarily talking about you know individual small businesses. So that's kind of how they're going to look at it, um, which uh, is right, but or in terms of correct in terms of what he's saying. But you know, again, as a small business owner myself. Uh, you know, you definitely have to feel for those who are going to be impacted. Now, we don't know how many how many that is right now, um, but we do know that yeah, I mean it's it's here now. People are now being impacted, and we'll see how that that we'll see what happens over the next couple of months uh, into next year. Now, <clears throat> next up, I want to talk about solar workforce diversity. Uh, so, solar for those who are unaware, solar energy, uh, in particular when it comes to jobs, is is doing extremely well. Um, I don't have the exact numbers, but essentially solar solar energy, the solar energy industry is growing rapidly, much more so than such as like oil, um, energy and gas and things, things of that nature, oil and gas. Uh, but so, so it's, it's a huge, huge opportunity for, for anyone looking to get into clean, um, clean energy type 
type of energy. <laughs> um, so uh, what we're seeing here is that the solar energy, uh, what's it called? The <coughs> Solar Energy Industries Association uh, is connecting with uh, essentially the HBCU um, Community Development Action Coalition to try to increase African-American students um, into the industry. So it's a memorandum of understanding. Basically what that means is they're saying that they promise to uh, try and recruit more more uh, African Americans into their into the solar energy. Um, so they're going to have a trade fair. Uh, you see individual jobs fair at HBCU schools just to tell people about um, the opportunities and recruit them um, and essentially see who qualifies and go from there. Um, in addition, they're going to be working with participating HBCUs to create a database of students uh, pursuing clean energy degrees for those interested working in solar. So again, this first step, um, I think this is an excellent step uh, for trying to recruit and, and increase the diversity within the solar energy. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But again, you know, good first step. And lastly, I want to end with the latest news that happened today, September 21st, on a Friday. Um, and that is a update on how Brexit is going and Essentially, it's going terribly. Uh, basically, I mean, there, there's a lot going on here. And if you want to, if you love political drama, this is political drama 101. Uh, basically, the British Prime Minister, Theresa May, who basically got thrown into <laughs> training a Brexit deal that she probably didn't want any part of, but here she is, um, uh, essentially put together a Brexit deal um, for the United Kingdom and the EU. Um, she said that when she sent it over, uh, what is it? The EU basically said nope and then <laughs> sent it back. So she's frustrated because uh, she's claiming that uh, they, they're not giving her any you know, alternatives to how to do this uh, or any, hey, okay, if you don't agree with this, then what, what is your suggestion? You know, like, what, let's negotiate what's, what's going on here. Um, apparently, there's, from according to her, uh, they're not being very forthcoming when it comes to negotiations. So what that has done is it has led to criticism from people within Theresa May's own party, as well as people who are for a hard Brexit um, within the UK, as well as the people within the EU uh, who think that they shouldn't be, uh, that they should not have voted for Brexit. Um, in addition, um, Northern Ireland um, apparently wants to be, <laughs> wants to be treated differently than the, than the United, uh, or not the United, but in Britain. Uh, when it comes to uh, the, the, this Brexit deal, uh, so th there's just a lot of, of issues going on here. I said it before and I'll say it again. Um, if you're doing business over when it comes to the UK, tread carefully because uh, they have a lot of things to work out um, internally. Uh, they, they did they do bring up one thing, and you know I'm not gonna tell you my thoughts, but I'm gonna you know just throw this question out there. It's interesting as some people within the the United Kingdom want to redo the Brexit vote, but Theresa May has stood hard fast and said that she will not redo the Brexit vote. Uh, for those who aren't aware, it's the vote that took place that <clears throat> decided that the United Kingdom would separate from the EU. Um, and it does bring up, you know, the interesting question is, in a democracy, if you vote for something that you know is going to take place, you know, four years from now, right? Let's say today we had to vote for the president of the United States for 2020, for 2022. Um, and then a year from now, we find out that the person that we decided to be president in 2022, I don't know, had stolen funds from whoever, um, right? Should there be another vote to take place because new information has come out. Um, and that's essentially what we're seeing here um, when it comes to, to Brexit which is, I mean, these negotiations are going terribly, just huge splits amongst the parties. EU is not respecting anything that they're coming forth with, um, with this new information, and as well as the projections. Um, people just really don't know how this is going to affect the, the United Kingdom. Um, with so much changing since people voted, do people deserve the right to re-vote or recast their vote? I don't know. Um, that's kind of just an open-ended question. But you know, as of right now, what we can all safely say is that things are not going well. And if, again, if you're doing business within the UK and whatnot, tread carefully. Uh, so with that being said, uh, this is Jamie White. Uh, thank you again for joining me for another week with Supplier Diversity and Small Business Economic Impact Report. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can definitely let me know. Uh, please vote. I mean, please vote. 
please like, subscribe, share the video, and leave a comment. Thank you, and have a great day.